We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. We all live in the digital world. 
We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are, are all, all united. united. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon or good evening. Um, to the hosts, could you please make uh, Matt Ford a co-host so he can share slides and then we can get started. Uh, yeah, that was Ford Matthew, not Mark Carvel, who you've just made a co-host. Thanks. Great. I think we can get going then. So uh, welcome everybody to the IGF 2021 lightning talk on measuring internet resilience and shutdowns, an overview of Internet Society's Pulse platform. I'm Susanna Gray, Director of Communications here at the Internet Society, and I'll be moderating this session today. I'll give a brief overview of the Pulse platform, and then I'm going to hand over to my colleagues, Kevin Chege, Matt Ford, and Hannah Kreitem, who's gonna, who are going to dive deeper into the focus areas and how you can use that data in your work. Uh, we'll have some time for questions at the end of the presentation, so um, please feel free to type things into the chat and we'll answer them as we go along or ask questions when we get to the end. Okay, thank you, Matt. So the Pulse platform was launched in uh, 2020 and presents curated internet measurement data from trusted sources to help everybody gain deeper data-driven insight into the internet. Um, this data helps everyone to assess whether the efforts that we all uh, are engaged in to ensure that the internet remains open, globally connected, secure and trustworthy are working. And it also helps policymakers, researchers, journalists, network operators, civil society groups and others to better understand the health, availability and the evolution of the internet. Next slide, please. We have several focus areas on Pulse, uh, enabling technologies, internet shutdowns, um, internet resilience, which launched in November. That's a, a new focus area for us. And centralization, which is actually launching later this week. So stand by for more information about that. And we'll go into more details about these focus areas in just a moment. Next slide, please. So where do we get all this data from? Um, we actually partner with multiple organizations and you can find out more about each of these data partners and the data that they provide to us um, on the Pulse platform at the link there on the slide. Um, next slide, please. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Hannah, who is going to talk more about internet shutdowns. Hello, everyone. So um, at Pulse, as Susanna mentioned, we cover multiple uh, areas of focus. One of them is documenting shutdowns or artificial internet limitations as the wider spectrum would be. Uh, we believe that we need to understand shutdowns and disruption to the global internet to be able to assess um, the, the impact and the damage that they may be causing uh, act to the access to the people. Uh, we offer a curated database of shutdowns event, events on Pulse and we work with key partners to verify and check and archive events as they occur. The, our data comes from multiple sources, including dedicated observatories like Kaida Ioda, UNI, and other observers dedicated to uh, measuring disruptions to the internet. We also have information from internet services providers like Google, um, 
and uh, Cloudflare, who allow us access to uh, to see uh, where disruptions are happening to their services, where people are not able to access their services, changes over time. We also follow uh, media outlets that report on shutdowns and disruption events, as well as local partners. Next slide, please, Matt. Why do we care? We believe that internet shutdowns harm societies. They are harmful in general to the society, the economy, and the global internet infrastructure. And uh, to be able to uh, push towards an open internet that's globally connected, secure, and trustworthy, which is our, our, our mission, we need to urge governments and decision makers to support policies that keep the internet on and strong. We also believe that content blocking is generally inefficient and ineffective, as well as causing unintended damages to internet users. So again, we, we encourage governments to rethink their policies and their options uh, when they decide to cut off access to the internet, limit the use of content, as well as uh, uh, limiting access to specific services. We see that this is important for the internet. Next slide, please. What are we noticing? Over the past couple of years of documenting internet shutdowns, we have noticed that full shutdowns are less common, but more blatant. Artificial internet limitations in general are becoming more targeted, local and even hyper-local, and harder to detect. Commonly said shutdowns target specific access methods, in particular mobile data, which is which we noticed uh, a huge jump in, you, in the use of cutting mobile data versus cutting fixed connection in 2021 compared to previous years. The limitations are very targeted, are on the rise, and do not always mean cutting off access completely. They also uh, cover hindering specific services. For instance, one of the uh, 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 examples that we have noticed, noticed is threatening Facebook live streaming around the public square during a protest. So we can see that it is very uh, specific in, the, in terms of area, service, and time. That's making it much harder to detect from the, from the outset. This artwork uh, shows what uh, AI thinks internet shutdown is which is basically layering different browsers, but still unable to see what they are. Um, and that is that represents what we, what we look at when we see internet shutdowns. Inability of people to accessing services they need and they want in time. You can uh, contribute to our data. Soon we will be launching a form for you to, to fill in. Uh, until then, you can you can always share uh, information on shutdowns on pulse alerts at isoc.org. I will share the link in the chat. Next to Matt. Thank you, Hannah. So we're going to hand over to Kevin now, who's going to talk more about internet resilience. Thank you, Susanna and uh, Hannah. Uh, greetings, everyone. My name is Kevin, and I will take you through uh, the work we've been doing on internet resilience. Uh, next slide. So uh, with internet resilience, uh, what we wanted to understand uh, was how uh, connectivity in the African continent is for various parts of the continent. Uh, we wanted to understand uh, which countries are well provisioned, uh, why they're well uh, provisioned, what policies are beneficial, and what infrastructure results in having a positive experience when users are online. Uh, we also wanted to get a good picture of uh, statistics, uh, how they compare to internet usage on the, on the ground. You know, it's, it's easy to present uh, numbers and figures of how good an internet connection is, but how does that uh, experience relate to the real world experience of a user who's using the connectivity in an African country? Uh, next slide, please. So um, AFRINIC and ISOC uh, worked together on a project called Measuring Inter-Resilience in Africa. In short, we call it MIRA. 
And uh, the main goal was to carry out sustained internet measurements in Africa so as to uh, arrive at two main uh, goals. First one being wanted to determine what levels of internet resilience are in select countries. And uh, before we got uh, into this work, we did a lot of uh, background uh, research to agree on what exactly we mean by internet resilience. Uh, when we got to that uh, conclusion of what we're going to use for internet resilience as a definition for our project, uh, we decided to uh, you know, seek for existing data sources, uh, try to find a very scalable manner to carry out any measurements we need to carry, and also identify which metrics we can use to uh, identify interresilience in a country. Then we also wanted to present this information in a very easy to understand manner. So whether you're a policymaker or a technical engineer or just a simple internet user who wants to uh, find out how good the connectivity is in, in your country in Africa or a neighboring country, uh, you can access that information uh, easily. Uh, next slide, please. So um, using a combination of, of surveys and uh, talking to a number of experts in the field of internet measurements, uh, we came up with what uh, we call the Internet Resilience Index, which is an indicator that measures a country's performance against four key uh, pillars on the internet. And these pillars are infrastructure, and infrastructure pertains to physical connectivity in a country. For example, how many uh, cable providers are there, how many uh, submarine providers are there, how many uh, landing stations are there. Uh, performance, how good the throughput is uh, in terms of speed in a country. Uh, enabling technologies, how, uh, how reliable is the DNS infrastructure, how is, how is the routing hygiene, is, you know, are, they, are the ISPs in the country using good uh, routing practices. And finally, the fourth pillar there is uh, local uh, market readiness. Uh, how competitive is the market? Are there a number of internet service providers or is there a limited number of uh, internet service providers? And uh, these four key pillars, we arrived, arrived at them using, uh, as I mentioned, surveys. We also um, spoke to a number of experts and uh, we decided to shortlist the most, uh, you know, the most agreed on metrics. This, this is by no means uh, all the metrics you can use to score an internet, uh, you know, the internet resilience in a country, but these are the ones that uh, appeared highest in, in, in our research. And uh, just to summarize what the Internet Resilience Index is, it is basically a scorecard for connectivity in a country. Uh, next slide, please. So um, we are happy to announce that as of last month, we've launched uh, what we're calling uh, the Resilience Page on Pulse, uh, with our Pulse platform, which has been mentioned by Hannah Alia. Uh, you can go to that. URL after this uh, session to try out uh, the uh, resilience page and see the various uh, presentations you can do in various countries. Uh, you can identify, sorry, you can view the metrics per country or for the whole continent or uh, per region. So you can say, I just want to view uh, the metrics in North Africa or uh, Southern Africa and so on. And uh, the URL is there to be shared as well on, on the chat. Uh, we just launched this and we are uh, looking forward to getting more uh, feedback on what you think about the uh, presentation of this data, and we are looking to improve this uh, as we move along. So uh, thank you, and we look forward to receiving uh, your feedback, and I'll hand back to uh, Susanna and uh, Matt. Thanks, Kevin. Um, next up will be Matt talking about emerging technologies and centralization, which is the new focus area that we're launching this week. Thank you, Susanna. Yeah, um, I'm Matt, uh, and uh, this is a, a summary of the uh, Enabling Technologies focus area on Pulse, where um, we present data collab uh, collected from a number of different sources um, on enabling technologies that, in our view, are critical to improving the scalability, uh, security, and trust of the open internet. Um, and so they are technologies like IP version 6, um, which is really critical for the ongoing scalability of a global internet that serves close to 10 billion people and many, many more uh, devices. Security technologies like HTTPS, um, which secures the web, but also many other um, uh, uh, services as well. And TLS 1.3, which is the latest version of the uh, transport layer security protocol, which is both more performant and more secure than, than previous versions. Uh, we also track the adoption of DNSSEC, 
um, both at uh, CCTLD, so um, country code domain level, and the adoption of DNSSEC validation by um, recursive resolvers. And most recently, we've added some data about the adoption of routing security related technologies. Um, so the extent to which service providers are signing routing announcements um, and publishing ROAs, and the extent to which those um, attestations are being validated um, as well. So two different views of the adoption of routing security. And we, we hope to add to all of these either with additional technologies or with additional data sources. Um, and um, we hope that this, uh, this data, um, which we can present over time or by country, um, is, is useful to local and regional advocacy efforts um, in, in encouraging um, ISPs in particular to adopt uh, these technologies that are really critical for the future of the open internet. Um, and there's a lot more information on, on, the, uh, on the enabling technologies page about, about all of this. Um, uh, a, a new focus area that we hope to launch um, uh, uh, this month, um, so you know, watch this space, um, is uh, on internet centralization. And um, we are using uh, measurements of top websites um, as, a, as, a, as a sort of proxy for, for the internet in this case. So we appreciate that that's a pretty partial view of the internet, um, but it, it allows us to get some traction on this question of how centralized are different aspects of internet service provision? How is that changing over time? And so um, we're going to launch this with an initial analysis of seven technology markets. Um, those are uh, content distribution networks or also known as reverse proxies, um, the um, security certificate provision, SSL certificate, top-level domains, web hosting, uh, data centers, DNS servers, and server location. And we're looking at, well, we're distilling all of those um, markets and all of this data, which we have for uh, um, different views of the top websites, so top million, top 10,000, and top 1,000, into two different uh, metrics of, of, of centralization. So we use a Gini coefficient, which gives us... Um, um, a measure of equality or inequality uh, in, a, in a market um, using the market shares of providers into that market um, and we also use the Gini coefficient to um, look at the uh, equality or inequality of market shares by jurisdiction so we wait we assign jurisdictions to providers in a given market and we then weight those, um, those market shares by the internet using popula population of those countries. And then we, then we derive a Gini coefficient across those market shares. So again, that gives us a set, it gives us a, a way of uh, a proxy for equality or degrees of inequality um, uh, on, on, a, on a per jurisdiction basis, basis as well. And then we're also using the herfindahl hirschman index, which is, gives us a measure of uh, market concentration. Um, so it's a, it's a slightly different uh, way of thinking about it to the Gini coefficient. The Gini coefficient is more of an absolute measure of equality or inequality, where, whereas the HHI, the herfindahl hirschman index, gives us a sense of is, is, there, is there some, uh, is the market very concentrated in a very small number of, of, of uh, actors or jurisdictions? Um, or is it, um, is it distributed? And it's not necessarily concerned whether, with whether or not that, uh, that, that uh, distribution is amongst uh, all of the players in the market, more that there's at least some distribution amongst um, the bigger, uh, bigger players in the market. So as I say, we'll be launching this um, uh, really soon now, um, and I hope, I hope it's interesting and, and helps provide some insight to people interested in this, this question of internet centralization. Um, that's, that's all I had. You do want to talk about uh, contact points and so on, Susanna? Yes, but first we have a couple of uh, questions in the chat. Could you go back to slide 12? And Kossi has a question on the internet resilience index. Um, did you just want to see it again or do you need more information, Kossi? You, 
uh, maybe just to add on. Um, so, uh, COSI, the index uh, is basically an indicator. It's it's a series of uh, calculations that we use to arrive at the score of resilience in a, in a country. And uh, if you go to the page, uh, org slash resilience, uh, you will see a white paper there that contains uh, more information about how we arrived at the index and uh, a bit more about the metrics and, and numbers that we're using. Uh, but in summary, it's just to provide a score to the country. Uh, we identified the metrics we wanted to use for this uh, stage of the work, uh, but it is uh, the way we the way we came up with the index is that it can be uh, modular. So in future, we can uh, add or remove a metric uh, if necessary. So I'll invite you to go to our uh, web page. There's much more information about how the index was formulated. Kevin, hello. Yes. Hello, Kevin. Please. Yes. We have the first line. We have 40, 40, and 20. Yeah. Why we, we, we don't take uh, the measure, measurement for uh, one, three, one, three for them, all the things? Why are you, are, you, are you taking 40, 40 like that? Why uh, in, enabling infrastructure is low down? A yeah, capable ecosystem. Why? Yeah. Why are you make the option yeah. like that? Okay, good question. So uh, that is uh, he, the question is relating to the weighting. How we came up with uh, those numbers? So the weighting uh, we used are uh, you know based on our assessment of uh, the various metrics. Uh, these are not the all the metrics we use to calculate. Uh, the the infrastructure pillar, for example, these these were just here for uh, demonstration purposes. So what we used were uh, sort of figures which we arrived at ourselves, and that's what we are using to present on Pulse. But uh, we are working on an interactive uh, way to present this data. So, for example, for you, Kosi, if you'd like to adjust the weight so that maybe one is twenty percent or thirty percent for something else you'll be able to do that uh, in, uh, you know, probably from next year once we improve the, the dashboard. So these numbers were just for our, you know, from our perspective, but, you know, from our analysis, we, we, we do understand that it is not possible to arrive at a metric that everyone agrees on. So it is going to be adjustable once we are done with uh, the front end. I hope that answers the question. Okay, for, for the last one also, local ecosystem, I propose you to make a half, half, half and half for the local ecosystem, market infrastructure and traffic localization is the same thing for me. It's not possible to have 60 and 40 an hour. Yeah, yeah, it's so... A proposal. Yeah, um, and, you know, the, the metrics, as I said, you know, we we do, we understand it's probably not going to be possible to arrive at weights that everyone agrees on. Uh, we have actually made a couple of changes and additions to uh, some of these uh, metrics. So uh, if you go to the Pulse page on, um, sorry, if you go to the resilience page on Pulse, you will see an accurate breakdown of each and every uh, weight and each and every metric. And, you know, these are adjustable. If you think one or if you'd like one to have more weight than another one, you can adjust. If one feels like, um, so for example, market structure is how many um, ISPs are in a country. So if you, if in your country, the situation is different, you can adjust it so that you get a clearer uh, picture. Um, and as I mentioned, we are working on an interactive uh, dashboard so that you can pick and choose which weight you think is more important than the other one. Uh, but for the purposes of displaying the data we had collected, we did uh, do a bit of research and we determined that for the purposes of presenting the data we have, we need to use some met or some weights and these are the ones uh, we are using for now. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. We have um, a question from Mark in the chat. I'm gonna read it just in case people don't have access to the chat. How can national Sorry, it's just disappeared. Okay. How can national policymakers and service providers use this valuable pulse data in the resilience index to resolve problems and gaps in connectivity? Is the data used to help develop community network projects in underserved rural areas, for example? 
So I guess that's for me as well. So um, uh, we just launched this uh, last year and uh, I like that question uh, because we, we, we are looking for various uh, ways that this data will be helpful to uh, regulators, um, internet service providers, uh, internet users. So uh, for example, we would like that if, if research is done using the data we provide on Pulse, can shed light on policies that are beneficial in some countries. So for example, why is it that maybe one country um, has more community networks than, than others? Is it that there are policies there that, that are good? Uh, why is it that um, one country has uh, you know, better round trip time, better throughput, better speeds, or, or a better resilience score than another country? So the data that is there is for use by everyone. Uh, we are looking forward for the different um, use cases that uh, will be derived from this. And I think moving on uh, probably from next year, since we just launched this last year, uh, you know, the uses of this data will be more, more apparent. And we'll do a bit of research ourselves internally with uh, Afrinic and ISOC, but we do invite all of you to look at the data there and the questions you're asking are exactly what we're hoping to uh, to see as use cases for the data we have on Pulse. Thank you, Kevin. I think we have a question from the floor and then we'll go to Osai on the chat. Uh, okay, Alexandre Savin, uh, from Moscow University. Um, uh, as I've seen uh, on the website, uh, the map uh, and the date is only about African region. Uh, do Internet Society plans to extend such researches for other regions like Eastern Europe, Asia, uh, Latin America? Um, what kind of data maybe do you need uh, or what kind of collaboration do you need to help to extend such researches to other regions? Thanks. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I can answer that. Thank you for your question. So yes, uh, when we started this work, the focus was on uh, on Africa. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we, we did a lot of uh, background research and uh, to arrive at the methodology for how we can measure internet resilience in Africa. Um, we did, once we launched this, we did receive a lot of uh, queries similar to what you're asking, can this be applied in other regions? Uh, we have had a lot of uh, you know, requests for using this in the Caribbean region and we are exploring uh, that. So perhaps next year we'll see how to adapt uh, this in the uh, Caribbean region. Uh, just yesterday we had a call, uh, myself and uh, Amrish uh, uh, Pokia, who is uh, the, the other expert who helped with uh, coming up with the, the index and you know, a lot of the work for resilience uh, about how to adapt this to Europe. And, uh, to, to answer is it is possible to adapt the work, uh, you know, the research to you know any other uh, part of, of the globe. Uh, the index may vary, so some of the information we've received is maybe in one continent some metrics are more important than others, or uh, one metric is um, perhaps not useful uh, in that part of the of, of the world. So all these are, are useful, and you know we invite all of you to have a look and if you feel that it's something that you'd like to explore we'd be very happy to hear from you and uh, you can email us from uh, you can email us at pulse at uh, isoc.org and we'd be happy to to talk to you about that thank you thank you thank you kevin so we have another question in the chat from Jose. and he's saying what's been the linkage between the pulse data and community networks has there been any challenges yet uh, back to you again, Kevin, I think. Um, so for community networks, uh, since we've just launched this, um, I wouldn't say there's been a, a direct use case, case for use case yet uh, in relation to um, resilience, uh, but we are hoping to get those uh, as we move along <clears throat> in the coming weeks and, and months. So uh, we are promoting the resilience page as much as possible. We are hoping uh, that more people get, uh, you know, interested and, you know, try to use the data to answer some of the questions in relation to what the internet experience is uh, on the ground. So perhaps in the, in the, you know, the weeks and months to come, uh, there'll be more information about how this will directly relate to uh, assisting community networks. Thank you, Kevin. And we have one final question because we are almost out of time. And this is another one from Mark. Um, on shutdowns, is ISOC helping to create more transparency and accountability of shutdown interventions by governments? Hannah, over to you. 
Thank you, Mark, for this uh, very good question. Actually, actually, yes, this is this is virtually our aim. We 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 want to provide data and information for for people working with the governments, people working with the, uh, different parties that are related to uh, to the internet uh, governance. Multi basically, stake different stakeholders working in relation to the internet governance to provide them with data and information that they can use to assess. Um, the uh, impact of of the interventions and uh, to also uh, to promote accountability wherever possible we as as uh, 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 an organization that that leans towards uh, technical issues that is our job is to provide the data and information put it out there for everyone to use uh, towards the benefit of the internet Thank you, Hannah. And so now we are right at time, so I'm going to close the session. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. If you want to get in touch with us, please email us, pulse at isoc.org. You can also follow us on Twitter at isoc underscore pulse. Uh, please also do sign up for the Pulse mailing list. We send out um, uh, the latest news and updates just once a month. And also we have a shiny new video, so please click on that and have a look and you'll see um, more information about Pulse and, and uh, how the platform works. So thanks very much and enjoy the rest of the IGF. <laughs>